Hi, my name is Justin Treadway. I'm with Globalscape Support. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create, delete, and modify a user in EFT Arcus, as well as go over a little bit of the site admin permissions and some of the limitations. So let's get started here. We have logged in already as a site administrator. We have the site we have access to right here, the support one. We right now have one settings template and one user. So we are going to right click and create a new user. And we will call this new user one. From here, we can add details like the user's name, a brief description, <clears throat> phone number, fax, email, pager, as well as some custom lines and comments. These can be very useful if you're pulling information from the users at a later point in time. We also have the ability to generate passwords. This can be used to follow the password policy, or we can manually type in a password here for the user. So we will generate the automatic password. The password type can be set standard or anonymous. Generally, standard will be the default. If you enter an email address here, it will auto-populate in the email address form down here. You can also set the option to email login credentials to the user. So if you are automatically creating, if you're creating users and you want to send passwords and login information to that user, once you've entered their email address and checked this box and the user creation is completed, it will automatically send that information to the user with information on how to log in. We will not do this for now. On the next page, we can see the site that the user is assigned to, as well as the default settings template, which is the settings template that I created it in. The home folder, by default, will use the home folder of the site with the user's login credentials. This is a default setting and can be changed. Here we have permissions essentially for the user's home folder and we can also set the user into certain groups. Now on the next page we have the protocols that the user has access to. The reason that these two are currently grayed out is because the site does not allow that. So since it's not allowed at the highest level then following down the user cannot access those protocols. We will go ahead and click on finish and this user is created. Now let's say that for whatever reason this user has forgotten their password. So one thing we can do to modify this user at this point in time is change their password and we can either again automatically generate a new password or manually type one in. We'll automatically generate it and we can still email the login credentials to that user. So let's say a user has contacted you and they have forgotten their login information. You can go and generate a new password, have it automatically emailed to them, and that will be then sent out. So moving forward, we can also edit the account details at a later point in time. So the same thing we saw when we were creating the user can also be changed later on. We can go in and edit the connections. So if we decide that this user no longer needs to have HTTP access, we can disable that and apply the change. We can also set their connection limits. By default, it will follow the settings template or the site template level. Um, but we can manually change those for individual users. I will leave those at default. We can also set strong passwords and other security options from this security tab. So let's say that this user is no longer in use and we want to expire the user. We can click on this button to expire the user on a certain date. So by default, it will select the current date, but you can set it in the future. So if this user, let's say, only needs access for 30 days, we can set it for 30 days in advance. But we will set them to expire today. 
and it will expire at the end of the day today. So if you want them to expire immediately, you can set it to a past date, or you can go in and uncheck this account enabled option here. And from there, we'll see that the user is no longer enabled versus the currently enabled user. So after the account's been disabled or expired for a certain amount of time, we can then go in and delete the user. So let's say you want to leave the user on just in case there's the potential that they might return or you need to get information from them. So let's say all of that has been done and we're ready to delete this user. We can right click on the user and go down to this delete option here. From here, you get a prompt window to delete just the user or the user and their home folders. I know this user is never coming back. I already gathered all the information from the user, such as their files and whatever they may have left in their folders. And so I'm going to delete the user and the home folders. Then we get the message saying you're about to delete the user and the home folders, as well as information about what their home folder may contain. So if this user still had files in there, it would tell me that they had files and folders within their home folder. We already got all that out, so we can go ahead and click OK. And this user will then be deleted. So moving forward, we can go over a little bit about the site administrator privileges. This is going to be set by the server administrator, so we don't have any access over that from this view. Now, some of the things that we'll have limitations to is we will not be able to go up and change the server level settings. So if we wanted to add a new administrator account, if we wanted to change anything at the highest level, we cannot do that. Anything on the site level, however, we can go ahead and change. So if we wanted to add FTP as an available protocol, we can enable that and our users can then use FTP. We don't want to do that, however, because that's an insecure protocol. We can also go in and enable workspaces. So one of the newer features in EFT is that we have access to we have access to workspaces as well as transactional workspaces. And what I mean by transactional workspaces are workspaces send and drop off, which are similar to a product called Mail Express that can send files securely. Now it is able to be done entirely within the EFT platform. So we can get into that in another video, but we have the ability to enable these settings from our site administrator permissions. We can also enable event rules. We have several different options, all from the site level that we can set up as the site administrator. And that has been how to create, delete, modify a user, as well as some brief permissions for a site level administrator. Thanks.